I've been helping businesses systemize, organize, and scale for over 20 years. And today I wanna to share with you my system and some of my tools that I've used pretty much every day for the last 10 or so years on managing and running our business and helping small business owners get more done. Some of these might seem like basic tools. We're gonna to cover task management. We're gonna go through my favorite password management software. I'm gonna share with you how to implement productive business solutions that can ideally work for any business. Now, whether you're new to managing projects or you're someone who likes to tinker with your systems, hopefully there's something useful for you here in this video if you wanna increase your productivity as an entrepreneur, business owner, or just as someone who wants to get more done with tech. Let's dive right into what I call the everything app, and that is Chrome. Now, Chrome is my go-to browser for running and managing my business operations. I do use Brave browser for some of my personal stuff, but Chrome is really best with deep integration into the rest of the Google world when I'm working on my work stuff. Now, why do I say that? Well, because Google Workspace allows me to implement policies that will automatically change things in my Chrome and my team's Chrome, no matter where they are or what device they're signed in from. So if I want to do something like give them some handy bookmarks that everyone in the company needs access to, or if I want to disable the built-in password manager on Chrome and have everyone use an alternative password manager, well, all of those are available in the Google Workspace admin panel, and it's really easy to set those policies and have them apply to anyone signed into Chrome. Now, some of the things that I like to do when I'm using Chrome are to pin tabs by right-clicking and selecting pin to keep certain tabs open like my calendar and my chat window with all of my Google chats with my team. And that means that I'm able to stay up to date on those and you know I get little notifications and little red dots if I need to check that tab from time to time, but I'm not filling up my screen with a million tabs. Next up, I've learned a couple of the basic keyboard shortcuts and I'll share a couple of those with you too because they make it really easy to get things done. Now, it's Command N for a new window, but most of the time you're probably gonna be using Command T for a new tab. You can use Command Shift T if you wanna open up an incognito window, and that's really helpful for getting access to websites that maybe you don't wanna have tracking enabled on. And Control W is gonna be the one that closes a tab. Now, if you're on a Chromebook, you can three finger swipe to the left and the right, and that's gonna take you through different tabs. On a Mac, it's Command Shift left and right, and that moves you through the different tabs on your screen. You can look up more Chrome shortcuts here, but my recommendation would be that you learn a couple and get used to those yourself. Chrome has a whole marketplace of amazing extensions that can enhance your productivity, do more inside of Chrome, and I'll save some of those for a different video. But if you've got an application like Loom sitting there inside your Chrome, well, it's just one click button away to share a video or a screencast with your team of something that's happening on your computer. And I personally really love Loom because it will automatically make my videos shorter. It'll give bullet points and transcriptions, and it'll do things like add an AI-driven title and allow me to remove the ums and the ahs and the other awkward silences with one button click. My next tool is a Chrome plugin, but it gets its whole own section because I love this tool so much and use it literally 10 or 20 times a day. It's called Clipboard History, and this gives you access to all of your most recent cut and pastes in one place where you can easily get access to them right inside of Chrome and if you need to get back to something that you cut, you've got one menu to access everything here. Now, the other cool thing about this app, and I know that Windows has their version of this built in now to Windows, is this can synchronize between different devices. And so if you're the kind of person who moves between multiple devices, you can actually have some of your clipboard synchronized between those. Now, if you're on a Mac, yes, you can automatically have cut and paste happen between your phone and your Apple computer, that's a great feature. But for the rest of us that might be moving from computer to computer during the day, or maybe if you're moving from a Windows machine to a Mac machine and vice versa, well, this is a great app for that. Next app on my favorites list is called Better Dictation. And to be honest, this is a pretty new app to my arsenal, but I've quickly fallen in love with it. Now, being someone who's neurodivergent, I don't really enjoy typing and I much prefer speaking. It's a much faster way of me getting information down onto, you know, well, it's not really paper, is it? It's into an interface somewhere on the computer. But the built-in dictation from Siri, I think leaves a little bit to be desired. And so my preference is to use a third-party dictation app 
app. Better Dictation is absolutely awesome. And it happens to use the Whisper voice model, which is actually baked into a number of the most modern large language models that you're using when you talk to an AI. So this is the latest and greatest tech now available on your computer with a short keystroke to get you dictating straight into whatever field you're talking into. Now, there are dictation tools if you're on a Chrome device, if you're on a Windows device, I don't have a recommendation for those right now, but the built-in tool for Chrome I know is pretty good. And you can also invoke that with a keyboard shortcut. And when I used an Android phone, the Google voice typing and voice transcription was pretty much the best in the world. So I expect that it's still amazing on Chrome these days. Now I should probably take a quick second to explain, well, why is the Google guy using a Mac and not a Chrome device? Unfortunately, when I'm on the road and creating content, I'm live streaming and it doesn't really work all that well from a Chromebook. So I've got to have a Mac with me and hence I'm going to recommend a few Mac tools along the way here. But don't fear, we've got plenty of videos on the channel all about Chrome OS and Chrome devices, which are my preferred devices when I'm in my studio at home and when I'm out and about on the go and not creating content. Next up, let's talk about managing passwords. And I add this one in because everyone should have a password manager. The built-in managers to Apple or to Chrome are okay, but they're not really useful if you've got a team and this channel is all about helping small business owners get more done with tech. And so if you wanna share a password with someone else, inside your business, you wanna share the ability to log into a website, but not necessarily reveal what that password is. Well, a good password manager is the tool to do that with. Now, we get a lot of heat for recommending LastPass on the channel. We've been using LastPass for a very long time. And while they had serious security issues for a number of times, and, and they were repeated, we still haven't found anything that we like more than LastPass for ease of use and the sharing features for team members. So we still use LastPass internally. Now. If something else goes wrong with LastPass and we're concerned with their security again, yep, sure, we're probably gonna be forced to find another solution. But feature for feature, we haven't found anything that we like better. That said, if you're not a fan of LastPass or you wanna find another solution, there are plenty more on the market. Keeper is a popular alternative that we recommend to customers who are not looking to work with LastPass. And if you're new to password managers, maybe you're a sole trader or just a consumer user, you could use something like 1Password if you wanted to or many other options that are available on the web. LastPass and other tools that allow you to share passwords with your team are great once you start scaling up and you wanna manage the security of multiple people. Next up, let's talk screen sharing. And I mentioned Loom earlier, but I wanna dig a little bit deeper into screen sharing and video sharing tools. Now, Loom, I find myself using for the quick feedback videos, or if I wanna review something that my team have done and send them back work. And this is really great for something called asynchronous working, which is we don't have to be in the same room at the same time to get work done. You can get work done on something, send it to me, I can give you video feedback as if we were having a human conversation, although it's one-sided. And I can send that back to you and you can respond to that on your time when it works for you. This is particularly great for teams that are you know, geolocated in different places or in different time zones. And it means that you're not constantly interrupting somebody else's workflow if they send you some work, you can review that work and send it back to them without having to schedule or organize a meeting or interrupt them. Now, Loom is what I typically use on a day-to-day -day basis for sending those short feedback videos, but there's another screen capture tool that I use a lot as well, and that's called Screencastify. Now, this is another Chrome extension. It lives inside of Chrome, and with one button click, you can start recording your screen. And Screencastify does one magic thing which makes it very useful for a particular use case. You see, Screencastify was designed with teachers in mind, and those teachers are typically using Google Workspace and creating content content for students a lot. Well, where they're gonna store all that content, they're probably gonna fill up their computer eventually. So this tool will automatically upload any videos that you record into your Google Drive. And it will even give you a one button click to share that video and it will turn on link sharing and let anyone in the world who has access to that link access that video, which is a great feature. Now, I use this when, when I'm creating training videos for my team. I wanna be able to record a video and have that video automatically appear in my Google Drive. And from there, I can click organize and move that file into the training folder inside our team's Google Drive. That is a beautiful end-to-end -end process of recording a training uploading it to Drive without even having to click a button and then moving it into the correct training folder for our team. And if you're someone who's creating SOPs, if you're creating a training library for staff or an onboarding guide, well, this is a great way to rapidly create lots of training videos 
and get them in the hands of your team easily. Now, it wouldn't be a workspace channel if I didn't cover workspace and my favorite trio of tools inside of Google Workspace are Google Calendar, Google Chat, and Google Meet. And these three work really brilliantly together when you're working with all three. If you're chit-chatting to someone back and forward on Google Chat, with one button, you can click and join a meeting with each other. Perfect for those times where you're trying to work something out over messages and it's not working. Hey, let's jump into a meeting. Boom, let's go straight into Meet. Calendar works great when you're scheduling calendar events with other team members because it'll automatically add a meeting to that calendar event. All right, we've got a meeting with someone. We need to discuss a particular topic or a particular project schedule a meeting, I can see my colleagues' calendars, boom, there's a meeting link ready to go. Now, for businesses that are still using Slack for messaging or WhatsApp or Messenger or something else, you're gonna miss out on these deep integrations. If you're using something like Zoom, you're not gonna have the cool features of Google Meet uploading your recordings to your Google Drive automatically after the meeting finishes. And with Gemini, you've got all kinds of additional cool things happening when you use all of these tools together. If you let Gemini transcribe your meeting, it's automatically gonna put all of your meeting transcripts as well as a summary note document into your Google Drive, and it's gonna go and attach that back to the calendar. These are awesome features and only work when you're using all of these apps together. Did I mention that if you set your out of office on Google Calendar, well, all of your colleagues will be able to see that in chat when they try and send you a direct message? Guys, it's 2024 as of the time of recording this video. If you're still using Slack or you're still using Zoom, it's time to go all in on Google and use the best of the operating system or let's say ecosystem that talks to each other. Now using all these tools in isolation is no fun. We need to get work done with our team. And my tool of choice for that is Asana. Asana is an amazing tool to help you keep track of projects across the business. You can record milestones, KPIs, you can keep track of time billing, and you can really have a bird's eye view of all the stuff happening in a business as a business owner or a business leader. Now using a shared task management system, whether it's Asana or Pick your own flavor, Monday, Trello, ClickUp. There's so many options on the market now. What they do is they help you to get off the whiteboard of projects up on the wall in the office and get work done together without having to hit people up or be a business owner that's micromanaging everybody else's work. Now, setting up a project or setting up a strategy inside a task management tool that's shared with your team means that your team can get their work done and report back on projects so you're not chasing all the time as a business owner. Now, we've got plenty of other videos on Asana on the channel. Now, what I really love about Asana is it gives us one place to put all of our ideas. I'm an entrepreneur, I have a million ideas a minute, and Asana is somewhere where I can put them down in a list of ideas, and then we can triage them at the appropriate time. I think many business owners, because they're a bit chaotic and they have brilliant ideas, want to share those ideas immediately with all of their team members. But that can end up in distraction and it can end up in the team not really knowing what the priorities are. Well, Asana can handle the priorities, but also be a good place to triage all those crazy ideas that might just turn into your next big hit. Now, it wouldn't be 2024 if I didn't mention an AI language model. We've got GPT taking the world by absolute storm and competitors like Claude also bringing their own unique spin to allowing us to interface with a whole new way of working. Now, Google's done a tremendous job at bringing Gemini up to scratch and making it really useful inside your Google ecosystem. I love asking Gemini to do things like read through all the documents and all the meeting notes in my Google Drive and give me some insights on where the business is at right now. I use Gemini to summarize emails that are sitting in my inbox if there's a long email thread and I don't wanna read through it all. And really, I'm starting to use Gemini as my second brain inside Google Workspace. Now, I do use a third party meeting notes app, which is called Fathom Video. And I find that's got a little bit of an edge over Gemini for making meeting notes. But let me tell you, Gemini has got pretty darn good in the last few weeks. And I reckon at some point in the coming months, I'm gonna ditch Fathom and switch to Gemini for all of my meeting note recordings. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which one of these has been the most useful for you or the most interesting? And if there's a killer app that you use for your productivity, put it down in the comments and share it with the community. See you next time.